This is arguably the most revolutionary piece of technology I've seen since the original iPhone in ChatGPT. If you haven't heard of ChatGPT before, it's OpenAI's AI chatbot that has been all the hype lately because some of the stuff that it can do is genuinely mind blowing. People are using it to write code for them, to do their homework, and recently it even passed Wharton Business School's MBA exam. So naturally, I wanted to see if we could use ChatGPT to help us do our work here at PhoneBuff. And while I have to report that it isn't able to fully replace us yet anyway, it has forever changed the way that we do work here at the studio. And hopefully by sharing with you how we use it, it'll spark some ideas on how you could leverage this totally free to use AI in your own life. So we'll start off with one that I think can apply to anybody who reads anything online. So like pretty much everyone, and that's to have ChatGPT give you short summaries for articles on the web. By simply copying text from an article, going to GPT, typing TLDR, which is short for too long, didn't read, and then pasting, where that big body of text is then condensed down into a simple paragraph. You can ask follow-up questions if you want more detail and GPT will be able to intelligently give that to you. But what I've personally found most useful with this is that you can ask GPT for an alternate view on the article as well. And it'll give you a different take on the article compared to the writer. So that way you can have like a more balanced view while you're ingesting information. Now, while copying and pasting articles still saves time compared to reading all of them, it's still a little tedious, right? Especially when you have dozens and dozens of articles to get through. But luckily there's a free ChatGPT Chrome extension called Gimme Summary, where you can have this entire process of like going back and forth done with a single click, where in total with the extension and ChatGPT summaries, it's saving me around 15 to 20 minutes every single day. Now, the next thing I use GPT for is to act as a writer. And I can't think of a better way to showcase this than to actually have it write something for me, like talking about today's sponsor in Casecu. So we'll type in, write a short script about the magic stand case from Casecu using the following points. We'll go over to the doc where I've outlined the key points that I want included in the script, copy that and paste it into GPT. And then boom, we have AI writing the script for us. I'll go ahead and read it with B-roll and everything. And after watching it, let me know how you think it did. Introducing the magic stand case from Casecu. The case is specifically designed for the iPhone 12, 13, and 14 series. And it comes with a unique feature that will make your life a lot easier. With the case having a MagSafe ring that folds out and acts as a kickstand. So you can use your phone hands-free in both portrait and in landscape modes. The stand only adds two millimeters to the case, so you won't even notice that it's there, but don't let that slim design fool you as Casecu has tested the stand for over 30,000 open and it still holds up strong. Plus, it's still fully compatible with all MagSafe accessories. Not only is it functional, but it also keeps your phone protected with the raised lip over the screen and the camera housing on the back. The Magic Stand is available in a variety of colors, including black, starburst black with a smoked out look, purple, gold, and clear. And for Valentine's Day, Casecu is running a special promotion where you can win prizes such as a six month AMC A-list membership or even a $1,000 travel fund. For more details, check the link in the description. Not bad, right? Like there are definitely a few things that I would change about the script, but in those situations when you hit writer's block, this has been an awesome tool to have, giving you something to work off of instead of just sitting there staring at a blank page. Now, in addition to writing though, ChatGPT has been coming in clutch when it comes to researching for us. We've actually been using it to create these little Instagram stories on like the top facts you didn't know about companies like Google and Apple by asking it, for example, to give me 20 facts about Apple that most people don't know. And then just choosing from that list the ones that we want to include. Something important to note here though, is as intelligent as ChatGPT is, it often makes very confident statements that are completely false. So you still need that element of like human fact checking. And you know, GPT's knowledge base does cut off after 2021, so it won't have more recent information. But for something like this, it totally works. And you know, if you want more facts, we just prompt it to give me 20 more facts and basically just rinse and repeat. Cutting down what would otherwise be hours and hours of research down to just a couple of minutes. 
Speaking of those Instagram stories though, the one that we did on Google ended up having a lot of number based facts, which meant we needed to make interesting animations of those numbers, otherwise the story would be super boring to look at. So instead of using After Effects to make them from scratch, we figured why not have ChatGPT act as an animator? For example, we needed an animation to visualize that there are 99,000 Google searches done every second. So I went to ChatGPT and simply typed in code and animation counting up from zero to 99,000 using HTML in a span of three seconds. And out comes some HTML code that you can copy and paste into your text editor, save it, and then open it up in your browser. Now, obviously this simple animation here won't cut it, right? So we can go back to ChatGPT and tell it to use the Roboto font, make it bigger and centered in screen. We'll go ahead and copy this new code into our text editor and then refresh the page. And now it looks a lot cleaner, but it's still not quite there yet, right? So I can go back to GPT and say the counter stops at 99,264 for some reason. And then to add some special sauce to the animation, I can tell it, can you make it so each digit's place uses a Google color? Now, I had to go back and forth a few times fine tuning this so it would work, but this is the end result, which I think looks amazing. We ended up doing a screen recording of this on a high resolution monitor, which is definitely like a quick and dirty solution compared to using After Effects. But honestly, if you didn't watch this video, you would never know the difference. And the best part is now that we have this HTML asset, we can just change the parameters anytime we need to use it again in the future. So like for as long as we use it, it's gonna continue saving us more and more time down the line. Okay, the next job I've been giving to ChatGPT is using it to act like an analyst to help me figure out what people think about our videos. You know, as much as I like reading comments, it can get really hard to keep up with them with all the different platforms that we post on. So what I've been doing is going to a video, copying a good chunk of the comments, and then asking GPT to give me bullet points about what people generally thought about the video based on those comments. And then bam, GPT reads all the comments and then gives me a list with the main themes. But you know, maybe that isn't the most useful thing for you if you're not creating content online. But the same principle applies to things like researching a product. You can just copy a set of reviews for a product. In this case, it's the Steam Deck doc on Amazon, and then tell GPT to give you the pros and cons using the reviews that we paste in. This saves you from reading those useless reviews on Amazon where like people end up complaining about the box being damaged on their particular order, which has more to do with FedEx than it does with the product. And you know, really it gives you the specific information that you need that will help you make a better purchasing decision faster. On that note of getting better, the next thing I've been using GPT for is to give me feedback on my writing. I think this is something that anybody can use, even if all you write is emails and text messages. And the way you do it is to copy the writing that you want feedback on. For me in this case, it's the intro for the MetaQuest Pro script I wrote, and then tell GPT what it is and to give you feedback and it begins listing notes for you as if it were your tutor or something with both positive and negative feedback, which is really cool. And because it keeps track of the conversation, I can then ask it to give me suggestions for things like a title, thumbnail, and tags for the YouTube video. And it does this right then and there as well. It almost feels like you have superpowers with GPT. And if I want more title suggestions, I can just ask for that and keep on working with it until I feel satisfied with the outputs. And that's generally the best way I've found to work with ChatGPT for whatever it is that you're trying to get it to do. If you treat it like it was a coworker, it's gonna really help you cut down on how much time it takes to get stuff done. But if you're expecting it to fully replace you or like do your work for you, you're probably gonna get disappointed. I think the best metaphor I've heard so far for ChatGPT is it's like a calculator, but for writing, reading, and like coding and probably a bunch of other stuff. You still have to know what to put in, but once you do, it can make you significantly more more efficient to the point where I don't think I'll ever go back to not using it here at the studio, even if they take away the free version. I'm definitely willing to throw some money down within reason, of course. Hopefully showing you how we use ChatGPT here has sparked at least some ideas on how you can use it in your life. But anyways, that is pretty much it for me in this video. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the very next episode.